Hi there floss friends! Welcome to Sycamore Stitches. My name is Amanda and this is a channel about cross stitching. I am very disjointed today. This is the fourth time I am trying to do this and hopefully we can just keep going. Um, and I may, do, I may need to um, tape this in sections and then put them together later so um, maybe um, you won't even notice. That would be great but there's just some time constraints I have today. Um, so let's get going. Um, it's been about three weeks since I did a video and I've done a ton of stitching. Um, my kids are back in school um, and we are getting on that schedule. Our evenings are very busy with activities, but I do have a bit of downtime during the day, most days um, when they're at school. Um, I probably should be like cleaning my house, but instead I just do the bare minimum of that and stitch and watch floss too. Oh well. Um, this little area is clean. <laughs> That's all that matters. Um, so I have a finish. I have a finish for now. I have a start and finish and I have a start. Um, so let me show you all of those uh, at the beginning of this. My finish is my Pro Choice Stitch Along from Notorious Needle. Let me put the board behind it so you can see it better. Um, this is a pretty big piece. I forgot to look at how many stitches were in this, but um, it was uh, nine parts that were released in the stitch along, but the parts were huge. Um, a, I started this, I think it, she started the stitch along April 15th, so that's when I started it, and I think the stitch along was kind of done by the end of June, but I just finished it a couple days ago. So um, I'm really excited about this. It needs ironed. Whoops. Um, I will be finishing it on this piece of canvas. Uh, that is how she does her finish tutorial as part of the stitch along and I think it will go well. I've done it before on a smaller piece. This one is on a piece of canvas. So I think this one, and I have a piece of canvas that is like just the right size as you can see. Um, I used all the call for colors except for the outlining around the my body was charted in this like very bright red that is not used in any other part of the piece and I found it a little jarring and I don't really like how pink and red look together and I really just don't like red I guess is the main problem I don't like red so I had started it with that and I just didn't really like it so I just uh I changed that back stitching color but besides that um I went as is and I just it's on an 18 count white Ada I have seen some done in great color combinations with the fabric, but I don't know. When I'm dealing with a mystery stitch along, I don't know. I kind of just go conservative with the colors of the background fabric. So uh, anyhow, uh, maybe we will see this again after I iron this and actually mount it, um, hopefully soon, maybe by next video. Um, but that was 73 hours. I don't know. I like to keep track of how many hours I stitch. Um, so that's a pretty big project for me. Most of my projects are around 40 or so hours is kind of like my average. Um, so that was a big one. Uh, speaking of big projects, I also have this. This is going to be a way more than 41. Um, this is my finish for now, which is after I'll show you the whole picture of the whole thing in a minute, but this is a Four Seasons piece from Emma Congdon's Cross Stitch for the Earth book. And I've been, I started this in the spring and I've been doing each season as we're in it. So I finished the summer piece. I still have like um, a couple of days worth of summer. I mean, I finished this like a week ago or two weeks ago. So. Um, this was my finish for now because I had finished the summer piece and I won't start the next half until the first day of autumn. So I still need autumn and winter on that second half, but we are halfway there with the spring and summer pieces done. But yes, this is also a big piece. I think I'm like 63 hours in at the halfway mark. So, um... There's more to come. Let me show you a picture real quick of what it will look like when it's done. This is the book it's in. And um, 
here's the full picture, the spring, summer, fall, winter. So I will be starting on this fall piece next week when fall starts officially. I know a lot of people think September's fall. I'll wait for the official day for, uh, for this. So, um, yep, that'll be out again soon. I also had a start and finish. Uh, this was the smallest project I think I've ever done. I really liked it. I, I don't really do small projects, um, but I think a lot of times when I see smalls, they're not really like my style. So, but I really liked doing this. So maybe I can find more that are more my style, I guess. Um, I'm sure they're out there. I just haven't been looking for them. This is a little hummingbird kit that I got from Pigeon Coop Designs. They were running a sale or a special in the summer where if you spent a certain amount of money in their shop, this was a freebie, uh, the kit. And um, so I got it with that. And I love how this is packaged and I wanna show you the um, chart, but it's the whole thing is just a little, and there's the threads right on there and there was a needle in there. I just thought it was such a cute little setup and you got the Ada too. Um, so here's my little hummingbird. And this was only like two days of stitching, five, five and a half hours or so. Um, and it was just, it was just really fun. Uh, it came together so quick. I'm just not used to doing small projects. Um, and I have to buy a small hoop to finish it in. I think a, um, five inch hoop. I had a six inch hoop, but it was a little too, you want, you want the, um, you want it to come right up to the edge. Why can't I talk? Like in the picture. You want the you want the stems to be going off the edge of the hoop. So the one that I had was still a little too big. So I need to get a smaller hoop to finish this. And and my youngest daughter has already tried to claim this for her room. So probably once I finish it in the hoop, I will let her have it. So he's just really cute. On a I think this is a 14 count Ada. It came with the little kit, just like a light blue. And I must say, like, uh, a lot of the charts I've been doing lately, if they have backstitch, it's been calling for the backstitch with two strands. And that is so, so much better. I don't know why. Like, I just really like the look of two-stranded backstitch much better than one-stranded backstitch. This is two-stranded backstitch. The backstitch on this is two-stranded backstitch, like these curly cues. It just... Mm. I like, I like it a lot better. I might start doing that at times, even when it's not called for, because I just really dislike backstitch. And so anything that makes me like it more, that's a good thing, right? <laughs> um, so that was a start, a start and finish. And my other start since we last talked was also from Pigeon Coop Designs. Um, it is this Great Plains piece. Uh, I can't dig it out of the stack, but I did another piece a little while ago um, that is also like this landscape. It was called Cordillera. It's like a sunset, a, a, like an orange sunset sun with some mountains and trees. And then this is the Great Plains. And then there's a third one that I haven't started yet that is more forest. And so I wanted to do all three in the set. This does come with an extra pattern, but I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna do the animal ones on black. Anyhow, that is that. I'm. These are such quick stitches. I am close to finishing. I think I'm at 73%. Um, so here's where we are. Uh, all of this stuff at the top is done. I have a little more of this dark green just to kind of finish out the circle here. And then there's one other green color to fill in here. And um, I'll probably be done with this after just a few more days of stitching on it. And uh, this is on a 28 count Monaco called tea dyed. It's, I didn't tea dye it myself. It's actually just called that. And I really like this Monaco cause it's got a nice, it's an even weave with a lot of stiffness to it, um, which apparently is something I prefer. Um, 
and this is a good, I, I started this because my daughter is playing soccer now and I did that other piece um, of this during softball season last spring and it was a really good travel piece to take with me to the fields because it, it's kind of very, got geometric patterns as you can see of the different things here. And um, it's just easy to follow and uh, I don't know. I, I found it a very good travel piece. So I started this for soccer and I have stitched on it completely at home. I haven't even taken it out of the house, I don't think. Um, so maybe I'll have to start the third one after I finish this for the actual soccer games. <laughs> um, but anyhow, that one should only need, I don't know what I got on this. There's a pink spot over here. I guess you won't see that when it's done, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but, uh, yeah, that one should be finished pretty soon. Okay, um, next we have Whips Works in Progress. I have a whiny dog who is grumpily laying down here. Um, I have like six uh, cross stitch whips and my counted canvas work one as well. So, um, we will start with, oh, I guess I need to show you this first, sorry. Um, we will start with my Twisted Rainbow Sampler by Northern Expressions Needlework. This is a really big piece I've been working on since the beginning of the year. It has 17 bands, 18 colors, that's probably right. Every other band is cross stitch and then specialty stitches, and I'm, about here, I, th I think I'm a, yeah, I'm finishing up this band right here. So I'm almost to the halfway point. I made a schedule for myself to hopefully finish two bands every two months, um, which I'm pretty much on schedule for with the hope of having this as a finish at the 18 month mark, which also incidentally would be a finish for Pride next year which I think would be very fitting. So hopefully I can keep to my schedule, but that's still a ways off. So huh, we will see. Um, and I've been trying to work on this every Wednesday morning. This one is a hard one because I have to really set aside a time because it's on black linen. I should just show you instead of like while I'm babbling about it. Um, it's on a 32 count black linen with dinky dyes, with the dinky dye silks. Um, there's a couple that are called for this being one of them. Sorry, I had to loosen up my scroll frame so I could try to show you all of it. There you go, kind of. Um, anyhow, as you can see, it's on a big scroll frame. It's on black linen. I have to kind of set aside a time for myself to like sit and do this when I have good lighting. And I have, I'm a day behind. I didn't work on it this Wednesday. So maybe I will work on this after I finish taping. Um, I have to finish this last little bit of this side of cross stitch and then the specialty band, which go a lot quicker than the cross stitch bands. So that's what I want to finish by the end of September. And I think I will be able to do that unless things get chaotic, which is always a possibility. Um, this last color change is so subtle. I really should have looked into this before I stitched it. I'm sure you won't be able to see it. Oh, you actually, it's so subtle. I can barely see it in real life. Basically, there is a color change in the middle of this band here between these flowers. Now, it is basically the same color green. The difference being one is like more matte and one is bright and shiny. So you can kind of almost see it. It's not even a change in color. It's more a change in like how the light reflects off of it. I'm a little disappointed in that. I wish it was a little more of an actual color change that you can see. Now, like this one's very subtle too, but you can see it. See how the wings and the body are very like slightly, this one's subtle. That one's not very subtle. Um, you can see it in this band. You can see it in this band because the colors change in the middle of all the bands. Um, but this one is very hard to see. And this color, this first green was supposed to be a yellow green. That's not yellow green at all. And the second one was supposed to be a bright green, which it definitely is a bright green. Anyhow, if I were 
thinking through this and not having just bought the colors on there, I would have definitely changed this first green to be an act to be more of a yellow green because it's not, but it's okay. It's fine. Um, I couldn't even see the color change at all, even holding the two flosses together at first, and I'm starting to be able to see it, but it's not really so much a color change as a brightness change. So that was a little, oops, sorry, disappointing, but it is what it is. We'll move on. Um, and then I'll be moving to another green here in the next band. So that'll be fun. I love it when I get to change the colors. That's the funnest part of that piece. But um, yeah, I'm going to keep on working on that every, every um, Wednesday morning. And then if it takes me about six weeks to do a cross stitch band and then like two weeks to do a specialty stitch band, then I should be on my two bands for two months schedule um, and keep with that. And once I get through the middle part, the pans will start to get smaller as I get closer to the end, but I'm in the, the biggest part of it. The next one I worked on is my sunflower piece by Alyssa Ocneas. I've done several of these botanical pieces of hers. Uh, I think three so far. This is my fourth. Um, they're very, I like, they have a lot of different colors for being such a small piece. You can see all the colors. This one's actually less colors than the other ones I've been doing and no blends, which the other ones had lots of blends. And then there's some really dramatic back stitching at the end, really make it pop. So this is where I'm at, uh, getting pretty well done with that. Uh, these ones are just so fun to look at before and after back stitching because like right now it's just kind of like blip. Um, I don't know what percentage I'm at, but my goal was to get all the cross stitching done by the end of summer and I make it, I either will make it or be close to it. Um, cause then I'll probably need to put it away for like a week or so before I do the back stitching. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe I can go right into it. Usually I'm like, Ooh, back stitching. I put it away. Um, but I have a little more, I have like maybe one or two more greens to do. And then just the blue sky sun section up at the top corner up here. This is not part of it. This is a needle minder that blends in very well. <laughs> so here we go. This will be for my youngest daughter. Um, the other two already have ones that I've done for them, Lily and Clover, which are their names. My younger daughter's name is Meadow, so this is a meadow of sunflowers. And then I have the mushroom one that I did for myself. Um, but according to my notes, I've done about 1,300 stitches on that since we last talked, so that's a lot. Next we have from Happy Sloth. Teach a man to fish. It says teach a man to fish and he'll turn around and t try to teach you to fish like he invented it and you're an idiot. I really love the juxtaposition of retro um, pictures and snarky comments. It, I don't know, I always love it. And um, here's where I'm at. I guess I should say, this is on a, just a 28 count white Lugana. This is on a 32 count Lugana from Fortnite Fabrics from their Fabric of the Month Groovy Gradients Club. I don't remember the name of it, but maybe Dancing Queen. Um, so anyhow, I got a lot done since last time. This second leg of hers I did, all of his legs. I mean, it's not done, filled in, but like uh, he was only done from here up. So I did all of that and I've started filling in the cream. I guess it's a little hard to see in her head and arm. All of, all of her body and all of his top body and shirt will be filled in with the cream. And this is all I have left to fill in of this kind of cranberry color. And then of course the words are cranberry. Um, and I have not started them yet. I want to finish the people first. So um, I had originally said I wanted to finish this by the end of summer, but I, I, don't, I don't think that's going to happen. But 
we will just keep plugging away and see how it goes. Next up we have Bear. I call it Watercolor Bear. It's a really large piece by Alyssa Ocneus, which is the same designer as the Sunflower piece, but this is a very different um, style. I was moving real slow on this one for a while, and then I finished, I finished the top three pages, I guess four page section, but the fourth page is completely white. Now I've turned it sideways and I'm starting just straight down this trunk and I'm going to do the bottom. Anyhow, now that I found a new place, it is, um, sorry, my dogs are barking and I'm sure you can hear them. Somebody's probably just walking down the sidewalk and it's so offensive to them. Um, Anyhow, I've gotten I've gotten more interested in it again. I was kind of at a standstill with this piece, and now I'm moving again. So there's still a little bit that is kind of off to the side here. I've turned my cue snap because I used to have it going the other way, and now I've been working my way down this trunk. So maybe I should put this behind this too. I should just put it behind everything. There we go, much better. Um, there's a lot of these are all full stitches. Um, a lot of these branches are too. A lot of this backgroundy stuff right here, it that's kind of hazy, is half stitches. Um, so like, and there's a lot of blends as well. It gives it a lot of um, interesting kind of dimensions, I guess. So yeah, my my goal is to continue down, continue down this trunk until I hit the bottom, which actually I think is below where the cue snap is. And then I'm going to go across the bottom and then just come back up. So I don't know. I'm not really good at like doing pages and just like stopping at a page edge. It's not really, I like to, I like to go cross country. I like to color complete. I'm actually having to refrain myself from like doing too much. Obviously I, I did hop over here a little bit, but I'm trying to kind of mostly stick to this trunk as I go down and not wander too much into some of the branches. And this is on a 28 count white Monaco. Again, I love, I'm really loving Monaco, but like, I don't know, I've only, it's only like there's some brown and there's some white and I haven't seen, I haven't seen any other colors. If you know anything more about that, let me know. But I mean, it works for, for this. And I know this is an obnoxiously large Q snap, but I kind of like it. This is my Friday morning piece. I've been trying to, my big pieces, I need to assign them days. And then I spin a wheel for other things or just stitch what I want, um, depending on my mood. Um, if I don't know what I want to stitch, then I spin my wheel. Um, but my big pieces, the Twisted Rainbow, the Bear, and then my Counted Canvas Work piece, they get um, a specific morning of the week because they're just large and unwieldy and I guess I could put them in smaller um, frames or something, but then I would have too much fabric. I, like, I don't like, I like having everything bundled up. <laughs> Anyhow, it works for me, whatever. Um, do I have a percentage on that one? No, I don't. I think it's probably around like 27% done. So getting there slowly but surely. Okay, next we have Olympic Park from Awesome Pattern Studio. They have, they're on Etsy and they also have their own um, web page. And they do a lot of these color block, brightly colored pieces. They have a whole series of these national parks. And so Olympic National Park is one of the places we went this summer. So I had started this right before we left on vacation and it was one of the pieces I took with me. Um, this is charted, as you can see, as like a big rectangle, um, but it also has the option to do it as a oval, um, like there's lines on the chart. And so in Pattern Keeper, before I started, I had gone and just like X'd out all the, all the other, all the corner kind of pieces to like make it into an oval. And that is how I'm doing it. Um, so it is a little annoying because now I can't get my percentages right on Pattern Keeper. I know, such a hard problem to deal with, right? Um, 
So these ones kind of don't look like much until they all start coming together. But as you can see, I kind of, here's the middle part where these rocks are jutting out of the ocean and there's a lot of like tree branches kind of coming in. Um, and some clouds. There's also a lot of white on white stitching, which I don't know, is pretty annoying. And I thought about doing it as half stitches, but then I started it as whole stitches so i don't know if that was a mistake but like there's a bunch of white on white down here that i've already done and then mostly i've been doing outlines up here of the clouds so that when i um this is a piece i take out of the house with me because i can just fill in sections that i've outlined like this i feel i can fill in i can fill in these clouds um, so that's that's something that i use this piece for when i need a little more mindless stitching um, travel stitching, stuff like that. Um, but I really like the bright colors. Um, I've been trying to um, not color complete, which is what I like to do, because if I do that, there will be so much white stitching and this light blue goes all the way up here. There will be so much of those two colors that I will lose my mind. So I... I have been trying to do like strands of them in between the more um, fun colors that I prefer. I have been using a random number generator to decide which color I'm going to stitch on next. And that seems to be working and it seems to be filling in pretty well. So um, there's that one. I have like six of their National Park ones. This is the first one that I've started. So. Um, I need to finish it so I can start some others. <laughs> um, next we have my Owl Forest Embroidery. This one's called Frogs Princesses. This was a kit I bought. And ignore my phone. Sorry about that. Um, I did not use the kit fabric, though. I switched it out for a different green fabric. It's not very easy to see that, but... I am making some good progress on this one. These are also the needle minders that came with the kit, a frog and a lily pad. So um, since last time I did this motif here that is coming up the side. Um, this is the bottom. I have some motifs to finish up these sides and then one kind of bar of motifs across the top. Um, and that's it. So this one's moving along pretty well. One of the things I like about this pattern, so they give you a paper pattern. Okay. Well in the kits, which you can't get right now because it's from Russia. So you can buy their PDFs. So I guess this isn't relevant unless you already have one of their kits. I bought this like a year ago. <laughs> Um, when it wasn't an issue to order something to have shipped from Russia. But um, they have like really large paper charts, which are huge to spread out. But then there was a second um, paper chart that was basically little motifs to cut out. Like, I'm not going to show you the pattern, but like you can see this is the whole side along the side. And you can cut this section out because it's a second chart. I guess like a working copy and then I just easily stick this you know on here hold it with one of my needle minders and it's like on my on my q-snap as I'm stitching I don't know I really like that so I guess that's something if I have paper charts which I've gotten away from using for a lot of things but the things that do have paper charts uh I like that idea of making you know, making copies making a working copy and then like cutting out little sections of them and just like sticking them right on my q snap with and holding them there with my needle miners and like I have a grime guard and like between those things they kind of like hold it there so I can just stitch on it so um I like that um so my last work in progress is my counted canvas work uh, piece or charted needlepoint. It's like needlepoint, but without the without the painting on the canvas. And it's called Azaleas by Moonlight from Nancy's Needle. Um, and it's a, a decent size. Here's where we're at. Um, so first time I've done a project like this, so you have like 
this is like stiff canvas with the stretcher bars and then you you know tack it to the stretcher bars um and the way the chart is it had a chart for this middle square and then it has a chart for this section and then when you're done with that you just flip it over and do it again so i'm getting close to being done with this but not quite um it will come out about here's my mark here and like here so i'm getting close and then i have to do the whole thing again on the bottom um yeah so it's it's a different thing i i like it but it's kind of weird because you can hold it in like whatever direction you want unlike when you're cross stitching and you always want your x's to go the same way and be crossed the same way I, this doesn't really matter you go up and down just like where it tells you to let me try to get you in close and so what i've done since last time is the sparkly purples the light and dark sparkly purples that go around here this goes really fast but i don't know i don't like to do long sessions on it i think this holding it on the stretcher bars is just annoying and since i don't have any sort of stand this would work great on a stand but i don't have one um and it's just yeah i guess it's just different too because like you can't the holes are bigger like your needle will just like fall through them you can't like rest it there when you i, I don't know it's just different i like it but um i think i prefer cross stitch to this but it's a it's it's good for I love the sparkle. It's got a lot of sparkle. It uses like pearl co cottons and the sparkles are, <laughs> I forget. Let me show you because I haven't showed this in a little bit. Oops. These are the sparkles. They are Rainbow Gallery. So there's pinks, there's purples, there are Karan Collection Snow which is like a glittery gold. So those are some of the, those are the glittery ones. And then these ones are all DMC Pearl Cotton Fives. These are the other colors I'm using. So thicker than normal floss. I have to use a needle threader because they are, I find impossible to thread because <laughs> they're so they're so big compared to what you would usually use with cross stitching so that is it for my works in progress hi so I did not have time to film the entirety of my floss tube last Friday and then the weekend was busy. So here I am on Monday and hopefully I should get this uploaded today. But I just wanted to do my plans and haul section um, since I didn't get to it. So firstly, haul, I got my Fortnite Fabrics Fabric of the Month. This one is called from the Groovy Gradients. This one is called Got To Be Real. And um, it is, it's a 32, Lu uh, 32 count Lugana. And that's showing up pretty well. It's kind of a dusky green. I really like this one. This um, is definitely kind of right up my alley. I have a couple thoughts about what I might use it for. I would really, I think, like to use it for my new Mirabilia. I got Ophelia. It's a little bit lighter than the dark green that they have, but I think it has enough of a grunginess to it that it would be okay. But I'm not completely sure because it, this is kind of a big Mirabilia and it doesn't, it wouldn't leave very much on the edges at all. Now that might be okay because this pattern has its own border kind of built into it. Like, you know, a lot of the Mirabilias would just be the, the lady in the middle, but this one um, already has like the border built in, which is why I think it's going to be a tight fit. But I think it could be okay, but I'm not sure about that one. Um, the other option of something I already have that needs some fabric is 
this barn owl from cottage garden samplings and that would be a very good choice there's the um i don't know why i flipped over the fabric too there's the colors um the only thing is i hadn't decided um this calls for a 40 count and i mean obviously you can use other counts as well but i was thinking about doing either 40 or 36 to keep it um the size i wanted it and this is a 32. so i'm not completely sure about that one either especially because i have two others from this group uh, that are not kitted up yet and i plan to get one more from from the fall sections so um i want them all to be the same size so whenever i decide what count they need to be they all need to be it so I'm not sure but even if it's not one of those two things I will definitely be able to find something for this because this is a great color a great neutral I also got an order from one two three stitch um, just with some basic stuff in it now speaking of the Mirabilia that I got Ophelia I got I got the stuff I needed for that so here's the other what Karan water lilies pine forest the first one, um, I don't have it right here, but I had already bought the first one when I got the chart. And just a few of the DMC that I didn't already have or that needed like two skeins. Um, I think that I have a lot of the other ones. And there's also a couple random things like that blue is not part of this, but <laughs> just something that I needed for something else. Ah, but the beads got the beads for Ophelia. There are, I think, seven packs of beads in here. Um, so they didn't have a bead pack, but just got them individually. No big deal. Um, I also got just some, um, I think this is 16 count, some 16 count black Ada, just because I had a couple things I wanted to kit up on black and just a big, chunk it's not that big quarter yard of 28 count white lugana just because just because I, I need to have 28 count white lugana around always just in case I need it um and I didn't have any I had used up um all that I had had um I think I, even from the kits because sometimes I end up stealing it from a kit which reminds me, I had stolen some 28 count um, tea dyed Monaco from things I already had kitted up to start that Great Plains piece from Pigeon Coop. So I had to get a bunch of that. And it was only like $6. So I got a bunch of that. So just kind of some neutral um, fabrics that I don't necessarily um, have a um project in mind for but that I just felt like I needed to have some laying around um so that's what I got from one two three stitch and that is all my haul um as far as plans um I went over some of it during my whips section I would like to try to finish the cross stitching on sunflowers piece um within like the next week and um I think that was the main one that I was trying to finish also I think I can finish that Great Plains one very quickly that I started I was debating pulling this one out since it is going to be fall um I had been working on this last fall I Love the picture, but I was not liking doing it and um, debating whether I should even keep it. This is, uh, I think it's called like Leaf Skeletons and it's from an Etsy shop called Riticuna, but it does not work in Pattern Keeper. It does not print out well. I just tried this morning re-uploading it in Pattern Keeper now that I know a little more about how to finagle things in there and I was able to get it in there like as a scanned image type if I only took like one page at a time. So I just did this one page, I think there's like four pages total that I'm working on. 
and that did seem to go in there obviously like I can't search for the symbols and stuff but um, since I can't even seem to print it out right either so I might give this another shot this is where I was at last fall oh I'm also doing this one oh one over one on 28 count which I had never done one over like I had never done an over one on a high count um, fabric before I love how it's looking but I was really not liking doing it and following the chart I'm gonna I think I'm gonna give it one more go of um, doing the chart in a different way because I was opening up on my laptop as a PDF and marking my sections um, with the edit tool which was both a uh, kind of clunky to me and also I could not then use my laptop for things like watching floss tube at the same time so I'm, I think I'm gonna pull this one out in the next week or so and give it another shot and see if having it put away for a year and um, has made me like it more or maybe uh, some over one stitching might be more appealing to me I mean, I'm not going to trash it, even if I don't like it, but I, as you can see, this is all I have done of this top corner. These like kind of two leaves here, basically. There's a whole lot more. <laughs> if I don't like this and I have to force myself to do it, I will never finish it. So, um, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to give it another shot and we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, so that's uh that's most of it uh for today and um i had wanted to originally do a first day of fall floss tube but that is this week and i'm only getting this out now on monday so i don't think that will happen but uh probably a late september one i will um i'll do one then so thanks for sticking around and I hope to see you guys all again soon. Bye.